Hi, I'm Mike Olivo. I think we all know what this is, a steel beam. We know what it's used for. But before we start developing structural analysis tools, we need to agree on names for different parts of a structure. It's also good to understand how each of the parts has its own unique characteristics. Some of the simplest structural members are also the oldest. A tension member holding up a suspension bridge like this one from South America. An arch like this one built in France by the Romans 2,025 years ago with a 90-foot span. Or a beam, a simple stone slab with a short span called a clapper bridge in England. So let's first look at tension members used to create structures. An iconic example is in the Golden Gate Bridge over the entrance to San Francisco Bay. For over a quarter century, it was the longest span. The tension cable at the top looks big enough to be a column, but it's actually made of over 27,000 individual tension wires. The Severn Bridge is a modern example. And the Metsovo Bridge in Greece is really unique with the tension cables running from one hill across the valley to the opposite hill. But bridges are not the only applications. The former Federal Reserve Bank Building in Minneapolis uses catenary tension members to support the floors. One characteristic that is unique to these cable tension members is that the shape of the cable depends on the loading. In this King Post Bridge, Loads from the bridge deck are transferred to the cable by the post. With a single point load, the cable takes a triangular shape. The cable in the Verrazano Narrows suspension bridge has an entire set of loads, almost like a uniform load applied by the suspenders. It takes a shape like a catenary or parabola. Arches are accepted by many as one of the most visually pleasing structural systems, and they have been used for over two centuries. Modern applications, like in the Natchez Traceway, or Kibitz Check in Brazil, are just as astounding. The arch is like a cable, but upside down, so rather than tension, it is in compression. Each of the vertical tension cables in the Arizona Roosevelt Bridge, built by the Kramer Company from Wisconsin, applies a load to the arch, keeping it in compression over its length. Masonry, concrete, steel, and wood are all used for arches. Truss members carry the same forces as cables and arches, but are straight rather than curved that the Zambezi River Bridge near Victoria Falls is a great example. Each truss member is pinned at its ends. Some are in compression as shown in red and some are in tension as shown in blue. The unique conditions for a truss member are straight members, pin-ended, either tension or else compression only. Steel and wood are the common materials. Now beams and columns are the most common structural members we use. Though straight, the beam doesn't carry only tension or compression like a truss member. The beam carries moments that cause bending. Beams are typically used in short spans less than 150 feet and can be made of steel or wood like the glue lamps shown here. Since bending moments cause simultaneous tension and compression in beams, using masonry or concrete is difficult because they crack when in tension. This is overcome by putting steel bars into concrete where tension will occur to resist the tension force. Columns are generally straight like beams, but they carry both bending moments and axial force, usually compression. Concrete and steel members are most common for columns. The basic structural components we will encounter include tension members, usually steel, 
where the shape depends on the type of loading. Arches, like upside down tension members and carrying compression force. Truss members, straight and carrying either tension or compression, usually of steel or wood. And beams, straight members with loads perpendicular to their length, causing bending moments, with both tension and compression internally, most commonly of steel, wood, or reinforced concrete. And finally, members like beams, columns, but members that resist axial force in addition to bending moments.